Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Liam with me, Liam. I'm joined as always by camera operator lady Kat. Say hi. Hello. There we go. And today we've got another recipe supplied by a fan of the show and my mother, Karen. And this is a creamy chicken with chorizo pasta bake. So are you looking forward to this one, Catherine? Yes, it's yummy when your mum makes it. Not so great when I make it, so... So, let's see where I fall. Mm. Uh, so, if you want to follow along at home, here's the ingredients that you're going to need. So first, 300 grams or 10 ounces of dried rigatoni or penny. We're is using it... fresh because we don't like dried. Is it penny or pen? I don't know. Okay, pasta. Uh, you could probably use any type of pasta really if you wanted to, right? If you want me to. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Uh, then it's 100 grams of chorizo chopped, uh, two cloves of garlic crushed, three chicken breasts cut into chunks, one 400 gram tin of cherry tomatoes, one 400 gram tin of chopped tomatoes, two teaspoons of dried oregano, 31 grams of fresh basil torn. We've only got 30 grams. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, then 75 grams of light soft cheese, three tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese and 150 grams of mozzarella cheese finely chopped. So that's all the things you're going to need if you want to cook this. Um, there's there's going to be a few other little things like salt and like spray for the pan and stuff. Don't worry about that. Uh, so step one. You need to heat the oven to either gas eight or 220 degrees, or if it's a fan oven, 200 degrees. Now, our oven is not great, so we're gonna heat it to 180. Your oven might also not be great. So just do what feels right for your oven. You know your oven best. Um, and then we need to cook the pasta following the packet instructions in plenty of salted boiling water. So you need to fill the kettle. I'm going to need to fill the kettle. Uh, unfortunately, our sink isn't really a uh, brilliant. Oh, that'll work, won't it? So just filling the filling the kettle right here. And um, once that's done, I'm going to put the kettle on, um, and then we'll wait for it to boil, and then we'll put it into a pan. Uh, if you've cooked pasta before, these steps are probably going to be quite familiar to you. If you haven't, uh, that's what you need to do. So, that's probably, that's probably enough, I reckon. And that's how you put the kettle on. Uh, that's going to take a couple of minutes to, to boil. So, my suggestion, while we're waiting on that, why don't I start cutting up the chorizo? because we've got too much chorizo. Yeah, so, and you need to cut it up into pieces anyway. Yeah, I need 100 grams of chorizo chopped. So first I need to figure out what 100 grams of chorizo is. Uh, so I'm gonna get out this scale and this scale hat. What's that called? I mean, it's not called a scale hat, is it? I'd just say it's a, a bowl. All right. Is this, but this bowl will come with the scale, yeah. or is it just a good thing that we use and it just happens to it fit quite well? It came with the scale. There you go. Um, so it's a scale hat, is that what the point is? I don't know the fan, uh, fancy names for all these sort of things. Quite honestly, I'm surprised there's not a specific chorizo weighing utensil. I'll be cooking as a stand. So, um, I'm going to use this knife. I'd use a serrated knife with chorizo because it's a bit tougher when it's uncooked. Do we have such a thing? Yeah, no, the small one at the front. That one? No, so I think it's the furthest one at the back. Oh. I, can't remember, I can't remember what position it was in. That's not serrated. Where's the bloody serrated one? This has some serration Oh yeah, no, that is that, that is that one. I couldn't see from where I was. Right, so, I'm gonna wash my hands because that's important, isn't it? Mm-hmm. When you're cooking, you always want to cook with clean hands 
Um, and a full heart, then you can't lose, can you? I wonder if anyone will get that reference. Clean hands, full heart, can't lose. I mean, it's not quite the reference, but... It's close enough, isn't it? Yeah. I've tweaked it for cooking purposes. Yeah. So, you want to dry them once you've uh, washed them. And then, if you join me over here, I'm just going to try and open this with some scissors. Good plan. You don't want to drop it now, do you? Scissors make opening things somewhat easier. Do we need to reseal seal this in any way? I can put it in a bag. Um, so my first step is figuring out... Oh! Well, hang on. Yeah, chorizo comes with tied up like that because it's a dry... So like, I can hang it? Yeah. Well, no, not so you can hang it. it I mean, you could hang it. But we but... want to take that bit out, surely. We don't yeah, want to just trick cut, it with them. Just cut the ends off of it like you would something else. I've never handled chorizo like this before. No, it smells good though, doesn't it? So I just cut the end off like this? Yeah. Blimey. Is chorizo what pepperoni's made out of? No. It smells similar though, don't it? I think what? pepperoni's salami, isn't it? What do I do with that? They can go in the bin, the kettle's boiled. Yeah, but... Oh, no. Yeah, well, you've got to wait. You forgot to put the pasta in the pot, haven't you? Is this the and right then... amount of pasta? No. How much pasta does it say? Are you making the this as in for four people, by the way? It doesn't say how many it's for. I think it's so. for four. We're making it as it is. It's 300 grams. Okay, well, what does this say on it? This says... 500 grams. So I need less... Yeah, why don't you put the pot on the top of the scale and then add the pasta to it? And you That's a good idea. It. Yeah. All right, Chef Liam top tip. Sometimes if you need to measure things that are going into a pot, just put the pot on top of the, the just measurement. remember pot. to set it to zero, obviously. Obviously. You're going to want to remember to zero it. How do you see it there, it? It says unstable. Oh, maybe it's too heavy. Okay, well, so much for that theory. That was a terrible chef, Liam, top tip. Now the thing won't turn. Oh, there we go. There we go. So how much did I say we wanted? 300 grams. 300 yeah. grams. Just carefully, because I don't know if it's going to take that much. It's fine. What I could do is it in, like, two sets of 150. 150. Yeah. And then that will add up to 300. That's just basic maths. Or I could do three sets of 100. I mean, if you really want to faff about, you I don't. Do Why is it not easier to come out of this bag? Because you've only cut a tiny hole in the top. Yeah, well, whatever. That's... That's close enough. That's 149. That's pretty close. So we've got 151 to go. Mm-hmm. All right. Shall I, shall I make the hole a bit bigger, then? Yeah, but carefully. Oh. I mean, that's just going to split open and go everywhere. All right. I'll leave it, then. I'll just use the scissors. Hell. Cooking is difficult. That's one takeaway. Oh, look at it just falling out now. Yeah, like a dream. Yeah. Um, a little bit more. Yeah, I'm getting there. There you go. 151. 151. Oh, Bang sorry. on. I did that perfectly. Yeah, well done. Um, now, I can't guarantee that you're going to be able to do it quite as perfectly because you're probably not a chef like me, but give it a go. You never know. So now, put the water in there. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> what? Oh, it just took so bloody long. Don't worry about it. It's probably gone cold again now. No. This is the th this, I've said this before on Cooking with Liam. Everyone's always rushing with cooking. Oh, I've got to do it fast. I've got to do it fast. It's going to get cold. Just take your time and have fun with it. It's <laughs> my advice. Thanks. Is that probably enough water? Have you covered the pasta? There you go. Now, I also said to salt it, didn't it? Yeah, you can add a bit of salt if you want. I'd love to. How much? Just a couple of twists. That's plenty. And then... That's the wrong one. <laughs> yep. That's the right one. And I just cook it like that, don't I? Yeah. 
Yeah, so fresh pasta will probably take about between it five. Should say and on the bag. Five and seven or six. Yeah, hang on, six. Six minutes. So if I put time on for six minutes. Yeah, then you'll know the pasta's done. Then I'll and know then the pasta's you can done. Cut the chorizo in the meantime. In the meantime, I'm cutting the chorizo. So I want a hundred grams Does of chorizo. Does it say how to cut it? Just like it just what? as chopped. Okay, just chop now, it into discs, I guess. That's too much. Yes. That's 225 yeah, we, grams. We can, we've clarified that. So. I wouldn't do it too thick. No, but so, okay, so let me, hang on. So if the, if the whole thing is 225 grams, I, about half of that would be about 110-ish grams. So just a little bit, that I reckon about there is going to get me my 100. Okay. Let's find out. This is what I reckon will be 100. Now, 82. I was way off. I would have been really impressed if that had been bang on 100, though. Yeah, but it wasn't, was it? No, that's Shit. probably going to be a bit too much, that. But you can give it a go. It's 117. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, Isn't you it? like chorizo, don't you? I love chorizo. So that's fine. I'm going to pop that back in the bag. Yeah. Actually, let me just do a little experiment. Oh, I just want to see. Happy hell, come on. I want to see how much this is. So that's 100 and whatever we said, 17 or something. It's 108. Oh, well, use that half then. Okay, put these two back in the bag then. There you go. Push that there, we'll sort that out later. So the chorizo, what I need to do was just chop it, isn't it? Yeah, just chop it into some discs that are um, about the width of a pound coin. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah? About the width of a pound coin. Here we go. That's probably about a pound coin width, right? That's quite thick for a pound coin. I'd probably make it a bit thinner. A bit thinner next time? Yeah. Yeah, lovely. A bit like that. Lovely jubbly. Have you got any uh, cat fison tips for chopping chorizo? Enjoy the smell while you're chopping it because it's one of the best smells in the world. Uh, okay. Uh, what about for getting the right thickness? Pound coin. For any anything you're cooking, just pound coin well, chorizo. No, I mean, like when we do, I mean, I'd probably cut those coins in half for the um, ris the, the paella that I do, but that's yeah. just a personal preference. But, and you could cut these in half if you wanted smaller bits. I don't think it really matters. You're frying it all the same. Yeah. So one of my um, one of the things that makes me a bit nervous with this is. Before we started doing cooking with Liam, I had a go at cooking for Kat a chorizo carbonara. Yeah. And what happened with that? Well, those were diced chorizo, so they yeah, cooked know, a lot quicker and therefore happened? they burnt. Yeah, so I've got a bit of a chorizo fear, if you will, right. that these are going to burn. Oh, that was a bit thick, but don't worry about it. Do you know what? Um, Chef Liam tops it. When you're chopping something like chorizo and you're trying to keep it quite consistent, every now and again, just throw in a little, a, one that's a little bit thicker um, or a little bit thinner, just like a little chorizo surprise. <laughs> and uh, whoever gets that one, in your head, they can either win or lose the competition, depending on how you feel about them. Are you gamifying dinner? Yeah. Right. The thing with cooking, and I'm going to be honest with you here, cooking with Liam, fact, straight from the heart, Cooking shit. So anything you can do to make it less shit, I'd say do it. Would you agree with that? Sure. What do you think about cooking? I don't particularly like cooking, but you know, when you cook something that's nice, it's it feels good. Any tips for how you'd cut like this end bit that's being really difficult without cutting your fingers open? Ow. Like that. You did, the knife didn't even touch you. It did touch me because I felt it on my finger. I did, it didn't look like it did, just carefully. Maybe like that? Sure. Oh, this is horrible. I hate this. I hate all of this. Why is there not a chorizo knife? Do you know what there is? I got, yeah, I got yeah. mum one, didn't I? Yeah, maybe we need one as well. Yeah. Alright, I'm done. I'm sick of it. That's done. I'm washing my hands now. Uh, another Chef Liam top tip. When you do get to a point with cooking that you are just sick of it, um, it's probably best to just stop there. No, have you got to finish cooking the dinner? Well, yeah, but I mean like when you're like preparing. So like, if you're chopping something, let's say you've got to chop like... Yeah, but what if you're sick of it after you've just like cut like once or twice? 
I'll just get on with it in that case. No. Like, what I, I'm talking about, like, let's say you've got like eight carrots to cut. I and feel you've like got the seven. timer should have gone off by now. Well, it hasn't. Okay. So let's say you've got eight carrots to cut. Yeah. And you've cut seven of them. Mm. And at that point, you're sick of it. I'd say just give up. Don't worry about the last one. Okay. That's, that's, that's my advice. Okay. What do you think? I think you should probably finish the job you started. Oh, I've cut the trips, haven't I? Yeah. So I'm going to check the timer now. Uh, it's got 40 seconds still. Ooh. And then What's once the that's next done, step? I need to drain it and set it to one side. So I'm going to get a, another utensil uh, for draining. Oh, clash. There we go. This is a colander. Yes. Sometimes called drain. a strainer. Yeah. Now, you get ones like this, and then you get much smaller ones for like flour and stuff. Are they called sieves? Yes. What's the difference? Is it the size of the holes, or is it the size of the overall? I mean, it's the size of the holes and the purpose of it, I suppose. Okay. Like, I use our sieve for straining rice, which I don't think is necessarily right, but it does the job. Whereas this one that you've got there wouldn't strain rice, because it would all just fall through it. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is turn the hob off, because that's important. You don't want to leave a hob going with nothing on it. Um, and that's how you start fires. And then, once we've just... Lovely, lovely. I'm just going to set that to one side and I'm just going to leave it there. So it's leave it. the washing up fairy to fix. No, because it's got a pasta in it, hasn't it? No, it's in the... Oh, the bowl? Yeah. You don't worry about that. I'm not fussed about that by now. This is cooking with Liam, not cleaning up the kitchen after cooking with Liam. Right. With Liam. Um, so, heat a large, dry, oven-proof frying pan. I've got a question for you here. Okay. So at some point, we've got to put everything into the oven. Oh, we'll decant it into a Pyrex. You heard it here first. We're going to decant it into a Pyrex. I don't like putting saucepans in the oven. No, I like the use of the word decant. Thank you. Personally. So, all right, so I'm heating this. Let me just get rid of all this stuff. It's in my way. And spin that around. But is that the way I like it? It's, I can't remember what yeah. way I have it, so. I like it the opposite way. Yeah. I need the ch 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 it's the spray. It, it's on the side in front of you. Yeah. So what this is, this is fry light. It's only one calorie, but that's per spray. So it builds up quite quickly. Um, but what you want to do is get a pan like this and just spray it around the pan. And then what this does. I wouldn't add it, that's too much. Some might say that's too much. I'm going to say that's enough. What this does is it provides um, a way for what you're you're putting in the pan to not stick to the pan. So you know how I said last time about you over explaining things? Not everyone, Catherine, will know what these things are. Okay. Now, if I just took this magical fry light thing and just like spraying it and I didn't explain what that is, if you'd never seen that before, you'd think I was I regret, mad. I regret saying what I've said now because now you're just taking even longer yeah we've got some so i'm heating this on a high heat and then i cook the chorizo for three to four minutes until the oils are released and it starts to crisp then i add the garlic then i add the chicken then i fry it for five minutes so you might want to prepare the garlic if it, is it crushed yeah okay. so it's two cloves of garlic crushed do you so... remember how to do that i mean i would chuck the chorizo in now if i'm honest because... Right, well, let me just get the, the crusher out. Careful, because the thing's going to fall out because you put it upside down. Yeah, that's fine. So there's the garlic crusher thing. So you, do you think I should chuck the chorizo in now, then? Yeah. I think that's oh, really actually, risky. No. no, let me, let me crush I just, the... I turned the heat on that pan down because you've got nothing in it and you've put it at a high heat. All right, I've turned it down. Okay. Let me just, let me sort out the garlic cloves and then we'll sort everything else out. So, if you remember last time, um, this is a bulb of garlic, and then this, what's inside of it, is a clove. You want two of those cloves. Do you want another chopping board, or can you do it on there? Oh, that'd be alright, right now. Yeah, it's got skin on you. Just exactly. Take it off. So, what you want to do is you want to take the skin off. Do you remember how you did it last time? 
Yeah, you cut the ends. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the same knife. That's fine. Don't try and stop me. Okay. Because one other thing, uh, another like game that you can play when you're cooking if you want, is how much washing up can we save? Because some people in this kitchen, but no names mentioned, that aren't me, they like to just use every single utensil they can think of when they're cooking and make a ruddy mess and have loads of washing up to do because I guess they love washing up. Um, we have a dishwasher, so I just use that. So what I like to do is, you know, try and reduce where I can um, how much washing up I create because the environment. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you saw that, but I cut the ends off of the garlic cloves and now all I'm doing is taking the skin off. And this is quite a tricky little task. Um, if you're really going to take this long, you might as well turn the heat off on that pan. No, I'm doing it. As I don't want it to can. the oil to burn. The oil hasn't burned yet. Don't worry about it. I don't want to wait until it does. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to chuck the old chorizo in. Wow, a great idea. Yeah. Cool. Who thought of that? Right. One problem I have made is I put all the garlic nonsense on the board that the chorizo's on, but I think I've got most of it off. I think we're fine. No, we're not. There's a bit more garlic. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. I've got the garlic stuff it's off. Like... Yep. Yeah, I've done it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. And now we use this. And we just, as you can see, just it's, in the thing. It's, it's fine. Just get on with the bloody garlic. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn this up now, though, because it's meant to be on a high heat. Yeah. For so three to four minutes. Get on with the bloody garlic. Oh, the garlic's over here. Oh, no. So, there's one. Um, oh, God. Gosh. Okay, so we put that in there like that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a garlic crusher... Why don't you push it over the bloody pan? Because that's where it's going. Yeah? Not until the chicken goes in, though. Which is in three to four minutes. Well, what are you just going to do with that bit of garlic then? Put it on a spoon. Right. I've got plans. They're so done plans. I want this garlic onto this spoon here, don't I? Okay. Like that. And then I want to get rid of the garlic that's inside the crusher with another spoon. Oh, that's time to sizzle. Why don't you just use your hands? Nah, don't okay. this way now, anyway. Right, yeah, that's done. It's not, no it is. Um, then I'm going to put that in, and then what I'm going to do super quickly... Have you not even cut up and peeled the other one yet? I've cut it, I haven't peeled it yet, but I'm just going to... This is like a scissor, so I'm just going to move this around. Because we don't want that burning. No. So, I've done that, I've done that. I've just got to peel this, it might take me a jiffy. Might take a bit of a jiffy. Have you got any top tips for how to peel garlic cloves quicker? Just get on with it. That's what I'm doing. And what happens if you do crush it with the skin? You'll get skin in it, which will be grim. Yeah, you don't want that, do you? No. Alright. Do you want to give the, the chorizo just a little uh, shake? Ooh, is this two cloves? I've actually done in one. I think I've done two cloves in one by mistake here. Okay, so this is important, if we can get the camera. So what you see here is, I thought this was this one clove, is important. but it's actually two cloves. Right. So just be aware of that. That can happen. Um, and no one's going to hold you accountable if that does happen. Garlic can be tricky like that. It's going in with it. Chicken's going in now. Okay. Is that all the garlic? That was the two cloves, yeah. Okay. I can't do that third one if you... No, think. I really don't. Uh, is there any paper inside here? I don't think so. But we'll find out, I guess. Oh, now we're... Is it? With me in. Uh, so let me just shape this around a little bit. There we go, that is cooking. 
Um, what is the next step? I think I'll try this for a couple of minutes now. So if I can just... So now I add the garlic and the chicken and fry for five minutes to brown. So we'll come back in five minutes time. Uh, so, now it's time for your favourite bit. Uh, cooking with me here in the kitchen. Cooking with me. Hello everyone, welcome back to Cooking with Liam. I've been cooking my chicken here. Uh, I've just turned the heat down while I prepare the next bit. And the first step is 75 grams of the soft cheese. Now, when you open up the cheese, you might be presented with a foil lid like this. Um, be careful when you take it off because there might be liquid. And it might also just come off in little sections. That's all right though, isn't it? I mean, it's not ideal. I'm pretty sure whenever I open it, I can peel it all at once. Whatever. So we want 75 grams of this. Yeah. Uh, that's 31, that's 57, that's 67, that's 73, that'll do. That'll do, done that, almost perfectly. Um, so what we need to do now it's just again, just keep making sure that the the stuff in here doesn't burn. So just keep moving it around where you can, and then you need to add. Uh, oh, we need to dip in both cans of tomatoes and bring to a simmer. So that's our first step here. So it doesn't say what order to do the tomatoes in. So I'm going to do the cherry ones first because they were the ones that were listed in the recipe first. So I'll tip these in. There you go. Yeah, if you want to come down this way. So that's the, the cherry tomatoes in. Now it's the chopped tomatoes. And that's that. And then I need to bring that to a simmer. So should I turn the heat back up? Yeah, but you want to mix it around a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So once that's done, just mix that back up. Mix right. it all in. Mix it all in. You really want to make sure you've coated all of the chicken, all of the chorizo. This just needs to look like a big old wok of red. Really what you're looking for there, isn't it? A wok of red. Yeah. Be careful uh, when you're doing this, because it might get a bit splashy and a bit spitty. And um, it's going to be hot. It is going to be hot. Is that probably the right temperature? Uh, yeah, that will build up to a simmer. All right, so while that's doing that, um, the next thing we need to do is half of the basil, and that needs to be ripped, torn, whatever word you want to use. So here's some I've prepared earlier. Um, I'm just going to go back to, to tearing it and just show you how I do that. So what I do... Just a tip to make it tear quicker is more than one leaf at a time and also fold them over do you, do you like me to show you no 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 i i know exactly what you're saying so get a couple of leaves like that yeah fold them in half like that and then just start tearing like that yeah that's basically what i'm saying well how was that not what you were saying well i didn't need to like fold it like an envelope just to... <laughs> i wanted to fold it okay like an envelope uh, and what you're looking for here is just ripped basil. Um, about half of what you've got, so I reckon, get rid of that. Um, just rip this up, rip this up. There's another stalk, don't want that. Now, why aren't we using the chopper to tear this? Because it's roughly torn, whereas the chopper would cut it into really small bits. Yeah, that that's were... about, about half of this bag, would you say? Yeah. So that's that done. Now, I think this is simmering. Yeah, I'd say that's got a cheeky little simmer. That's got a cheeky little simmer. So what we need to do, now here's where I'm going to divert from the recipe here, because it says to add in three quarters of the oregano, but you only need two teaspoons of the oregano. So three quarters of two teaspoons? Doesn't feel worth it. I'm just, just doing two teaspoons. Yeah, just add it all now. I'm diverting. I suspect 
the last bit. I've dropped Oops. the lid. I've dropped this. the lid. It's all right, I'm getting it. Oh. Um, the, the last... Oh. Okay, we'll just add that bit and that's probably your two teaspoons, isn't I it? I reckon a little tiny bit more. Yeah, but now you're just going to no, no, do that and just chuck or load it in. That, that's fine. That's, that's plenty now. Um, I'm going to give that a little stir. You're lucky I was still standing back up when you did that and I missed what you were doing. What was I doing? When you spilled a load of the oregano in there. Don't worry about that. That was just um, a, a Sheffield flourish, if you will. A bit like, um, so there's a meme you might have heard of Salt Bay, where he puts the salt in like that. I, yeah. was, I was doing my version of that. Right. I'm going to put the cheese in now. Is that so. what it says to do next? I don't know. By the way, out. at some point, it's going to ask you to add the mozzarella that you haven't chopped yet. Half the basil, the soft cheese and some seasoning. Stir until the cheese has melted into the sauce. Why That's don't it. I do the stirring whilst you cut up the mozzarella? There's a little bit of cheese left. Um, yeah, we'll, we, we'll figure that out in a minute. Let's just get that in. Um, there's the cheese and the basil was the next thing that we wanted in. I thought you'd added that already. Nah. There we go. Everything is added in. Oh, well, there's still some basil left in there. Yeah, I'm sick of it though. Right. And like I said, when you get sick of it, just give up. Right. Uh, as long as you've got most done, then I think you're safe to give up. Uh, so you're going to stir that in. And I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to look at the recipe. Cut the mozzarella Stir until the cheese is made into the sauce. Add the pasta and mix well. Scatter on the parmesan and mozzarella and the rest of the oregano. So, I need to do 150 grams of mozzarella cheese finely chopped. So this is the mozzarella. I'm gonna cut this over the sink because it's very liquidy. Oh, he remembered. Mm -hmm. Cooking with Leah is an educational show where I am learning. I'm gonna get a gander at this. I'm just gonna cut the edge off like that. And as you can see already, all that, all that liquid is just coming right out. We don't want any of that. How much mozzarella is needed? 150 grams. How much is in that? Thing? 240 grams. Ooh. So we've got problems. Um, should I just use this bowl for weighing it out? Sure. I need to cut a bigger hole. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me cut a bigger hole. So I'm getting this out. I'm going to use a different knife. Okay. Going against your own philosophies now. Yeah, but that knife's chewit sorry, and this knife, it's got the serrated thing, and I don't want the serrated thing for this. Okay. Look at that, that just cuts like a dream. Do you love a bit mozzarella? So I'm just going to turn the scales on. What? 64. Oh, that weight, fun fact, the weight includes the water. So the, the package weight includes the water on it. So how much did you need? 150. I mean, 130 is plenty. Should I put some water in there? No. All right, so what That's do I... That's not what I meant. I just... What do I do with this then? Just... Finely chop it, it says. How yeah. fine is finely chopped? I'll do. Would you say that's pretty finely chopped? Yeah, maybe cut down some of the bigger bits in half. That, yeah. I mean, that's a bit to you, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is just a this is step one of a two-step process. Sort of haphazardly chop it. I'm not going to haphazardly chop it. I'm going to chop it with care, love, and affection because that's how I make meals for you. Oh. That's how I feel about you. Overcook this then. Yeah, that is one of the problems you've got. Yeah. Um. Now, actually, you can probably turn that off now. Does the mozzarella not need go go in when it's hot? I think the mozzarella goes in. The next section when we okay, put it in the thing. Well, you need to add the pasta to it, don't you? Wrong. Exactly, and that's when I think the mozzarella goes in. But I could be wrong. Okay, well I've turned it off. Let's hope I'm right. Yeah. So I'm just finally chopping this still. Oh, sorry. I got yeah. Distracted. I know. See, that's quite a lot of mozzarella. Yeah, but it's going to be quite a big dish, isn't it? That this is all going in. Yeah. Have some for lunch tomorrow. 
Yeah, you could do. Yeah. Um, so while while I'm doing this, do you want to tell the viewers at home what last week's ended up turning out like when we did the little taste test, but then we had all of it. Um, what did we have last chicken week? Chicken souvlaki last week. Yeah, it was overcooked. Um, how did that happen? You cut the pieces too small. The pieces of chicken? Yeah, well, way too small. Don't worry about that. This is the appreciation you get when you cook for someone. No, I appreciate you doing it, but you asked for my feedback. Let me ask the viewers at home, did that sound like appreciation? That was just constructive criticism. Yeah, so add the pasta, mix well, and scatter on the parmesan and mozzarella and the rest of the oregano. So that's gone really well. We don't need to add any more oregano there, do we? No. Um, so, which bowl? I'd say the larger Pyrex will probably the one at the bottom? hopefully fit it in. Yeah, just be careful. Okay, so my question now is um, put the pasta in then that on top. What? Well, I've got to put no, the pasta. You add the pasta to and that. mix it in. Otherwise, you're just going to have a sauce sat on the top. Got to mix it all in, mate. So the pasta goes in here? Yeah. Blimey. Just carefully, because yeah, you're yeah, not going to yeah, have a yeah, lot yeah. of room. Come on, I'm always careful. No, you're not. <laughs> what was that? Always careful. Always careful. Right, now you need to try and mix that all in without it going everywhere. Yeah, and I will do that by folding it. Now, folding is a technique that we use um, sometimes with baking, where you go from the bottom with a spoon and you lift it up and you sort of like turn it over. So I'm just folding that in now. Did you say I explained that sufficiently? No, it'll do. Are you surprised that I know the term folding when it comes no, to cooking? No, it's pretty basic. Oh, whatever. You didn't know it. Yeah, I did. Oh, proof it. <laughs> Don't need to. All right, so here we go. This is cooking with Liam. Um, this is technically cooking if it's not on a, a heat. Right, it's part of cooking a recipe. It's going to be baked in a minute. Exactly. I think that's probably fine, isn't it? Because I'm just kind of getting a bit sick of it, and what do I say when I get sick of it? Give up. Just move on to the next step. Right, okay. And that is to decant this into that thing that I put all the way over there, right. hopefully. Okay, well, you go get that then. Can I take the lid off? Yeah, you don't want the lid. Because you don't want to put the lid in the oven. No, that would be silly. That would be madness. Um, so, oh, is this even all going to fit in? Well, we're about to find out. I've got a feeling it ain't. Oh, it's really heavy as well. Well, we can use the second Pyrex for extra if you want. Why are you doing it that way when you could just add it in? Like that? Yeah, just this feels carefully. bad. I don't like it. Well, can just... I don't like this one bit. This isn't good. This is not good vibes. I hate it. You're almost there now. Yeah, I don't like it though. Did there it. we go, look. I did, it. I did it. Do you like it now? Yeah, I did it. Well done. Now you can flatten that out a bit, so it's spread evenly in the pot. There we go. No idea if this is going to like bake all the way through, but we'll just We'll find out, won't we? So what I need to do now is add this stuff to it. Yeah, so evenly distributed across the top, so... What? Just kind of sprinkle it over the top. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, so it's evenly distributed. It's not easy to do. No. Oh no. Have you dropped a bit? Yeah, no, I'm about it. I'm just going to in that. Bit there. Right there. Uh, a little bit over there, but in that corner. But in this, the corners are quite hard to get, but I've managed pretty well. And then it was the rest of the trap, the, the ripped basil, which we haven't really ripped. Um, so let's just do that real fast. Well, there's no time pressure now because I just put my finger in front of the camera, sorry. Um, there's no time pressure because this is just going to sit here until it's ready to go in the oven. Oh, okay. So I'm just... I mean, let's not take the piss. Like, don't take forever. No, but um, this is cooking with Liam right now. So what you want to do, just rip the basil, put it on top. How would you say this is looking? Um... I think it's looking good, don't you? Yeah, how's it smelling? It's smelling very nice. Would you like to describe the smell to the audience? Well, I can mostly smell the basil at the moment because it's the closest thing to me. Makes sense. Um, but no, it smells like tomato and cheese and chorizo. Lovely. Well, yes, Many of so... my favourite things. Now, I'm probably not going to do a lot more of the basil. No, I was going to say, that's probably enough anyway. Well, I want to finish what's in my hand. 
you know, like try and distribute it a bit more evenly. Yeah, like this corner up here hasn't yeah, got enough. Yeah, and this corner's a bit lacking. Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay. There we go, there we go. Oh, oh God, you've still got quite a lot in your hand. I wouldn't have much more than what's there. All right, I'm sick of it, done. All right. Done, done. So now we just pop that into the oven. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, you we don't. You haven't Parmesan yet, haven't you? Yeah, I need to add three tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. Yeah, just sprinkle it over the top. Yeah, and then I bake it for 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to get a tablespoon now. Okay. Here's the grated Parmesan. I'm going to open this up carefully because we don't want it going everywhere, do we? Right. Um, oh, God, this is a new one. I thought this one that we'd opened already. Didn't have to be so careful then. Um, so what I'm going to do, as you can see in here, there's some big chunks. I'm going to avoid those. don't want big chunks. Um, now, is that is that a tablespoon or is that too much? I mean, that's a heaped tablespoon, isn't it? So About that then? Yeah, that looks yeah. better. I'm, I feel happier with that. Um, one thing when it comes to cooking, once you start getting a bit more familiar with your way around the kitchen, like I have now after doing this for five weeks, um, you're going to start getting a bit of a gut feel for this kind of stuff. And I would say listen to that gut. So again, that's a, that's a second tablespoon. Just listen to that gut. It's your inner chef telling you what to do. Because humans, we've evolved to know how to cook, probably. Um, it's a survival thing. Uh, so one, one last one. God, this, this is a lot of parmesan, isn't it? Parmesan's good. All right. And that will give it a crunchy, crispy topping. So. Yeah, let's hope it all cooks all the way through, though. Yeah. Okay. We'll put it in for twenty-five. Twenty-five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, there's the lid. So okay, I'm going to get the oven gloves on. I'm going to yeah. put that in the oven, and then. We're going to do some I would, up. to make it a bit easier for you, I'd probably put the Pyrex on a baking tray. That's a really good idea. Then you can lift the baking tray rather than the side of the Pyrex. So I just. That's a big Pyrex, though. Yeah, I'd pick the largest baking tray that's in there. That'll do, won't it? This should be a big enough baking So I'm going to do this over here, where I've got the room. I put the oven gloves on a bit prematurely because it's quite cumbersome. Um, yeah, but that might be a bit warm, so probably a good idea. It's just cumbersome. There we go. Don't lift it. <laughs> what? You just sort of like lifted it, like I'm trying to do it in front of the camera like that, and you could have dropped it. Didn't. So the oven's preheated to the temperature. Uh, we've done 180 degrees because that's what our oven prefers. Oh, I don't like this. Is that going to fit in? Oh, that fits in like an absolute treat. Put it in sideways so it cooks evenly, though. There we go. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 We're going to let that cook for 25 minutes. I'm going to go just put a timer on. And then what we're going to do? You're going to sing the song. Am I going to sing it by myself? Yes. All right. Um, so here's the timer. Here's 25 minutes. Cooking with Liam here in the kitchen. Cooking with Liam. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Cooking with Liam. I made a mistake. Um, you might have seen last time I put the basil on first. You're not meant to do that. You're supposed to put the basil on once it comes out. Cat assures me that it's going to be fine. No, I said it might be. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Oh dear. So we put this in for 25 minutes. The recipe said 20 to 25 minutes. Should have done it for 20. Yeah, but Cat told me to do it for 25. It's all my fault. Yeah. So, oh cool. God. Oh, it looks shit. So the top is slightly burnt, but you know, like, I think we can work around the, the burnt bits of pasta. Yeah, maybe. We'll give it a go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna spoon this up. To be fair, the basil doesn't actually look like it's burnt. 
Yeah, but so this is the point where you would have put the basil on and it would have looked a lot better. And also maybe if you're cooking this, Chef Liam top tip, if a recipe says 20 to 25 minutes, put the timer on for 20, check it at that point, and if you think it still needs another five minutes, put yeah, it for another five minutes. Yeah, we should minutes. have done that really. Yeah. Uh, nice. It's fine. It's all good. I'm sure it will still taste nice. Yeah. Let's see. So I'm going to just cut into it. I'm going to move the bowl closer to the... So I'm just going to serve this up very nicely. Um, as we always say on Cooking with Liam, presentation is everything when it comes to cooking. And this is yours, by the way, so tell me when you want me to stop. That's plenty, thank you. So there you go. That's one bowl presented nicely. Here's the next bowl that we're going to present. Um, when you're serving this, um, serve serve an amount that you think you can eat and that your friends or whoever it is you're cooking it for, that you think they can eat as well. Some people, um, fun fact, um, Kat's one of these people, if you put too much on their plate, it actually puts them off eating, um, which is bizarre to me. I, I see it as a challenge, but just know who you're cooking for and accommodate accordingly. Can so, I have a bit more of the topping, but like a less burnt looking bit, like, like this, this bit. bit. There you go. Yeah, that might be too much food now, but it's fine. And Figure what we've out. got here is probably a good half that's left for lunch, lunch at another time, right? Yeah. There you go. Bon appetit. Well, what time is it now? Uh, we do the taste test in a minute, so we'll be back for the taste test. Get a bit of chicken off. So we're now here for the taste test. Uh, Kat's going to taste it first. Hmm. I think it's nice. Yeah, is yeah. it as good as when Mum makes it? No, of course it's not. I think the pasta is ever so slightly overdone, but it's always very tasty. All right, am I going to get a chance to taste it? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't very smooth, sorry. Okay. So, have you have you tried a bit of the chorizo? No, but I know what chorizo tastes like. Okay, well, I want to try... I'm trying to find a good bit to try. It's all really big. I'm going to try this bit. A bit of the burnt basil on it, really. Mm. It's still very surprisingly tasty. Yeah, it is very tasty. Mm. Is that your favourite so far? Yeah, it's not as good as when Mum does it, but no, it's, it's... I'd say it's pretty damn close considering yeah. mistakes were made. Do you say it's better than when I did it? You'd have to do it again for me to remind me because I can't mm, really remember. How convenient. Yeah. So that was cooking with Liam. Um, I would say on, on terms of easiness of, of how easy this was to cook, mm. pretty easy. I'd yeah. Say. Yeah, um, not too much chopping or anything. No, if you are cooking this at home, just ignore my little bit about the basil, get that right, and I think you're on to a winner. Very good. Bye. And you're not going to sing your little song? No, we don't do that at the end. We just say bye because we oh, okay. desperately want to get into eating. Bye then. Bye. Bye.